Hey guys, welcome back. This is a pretty special review for me to do because this is a lens that I've been holding my breath for for a long time. The new Z-mount Nikon 600mm f4 TC VRS lens is without a doubt the flagship Nikkor lens. Regardless of your genre of photography or your preferences for equipment, you have to admit that they don't come any more elite than this. In fact, this lens replaces the two top previous F-mount Nikon lenses as far as prime super telephotos. The 600 F4 and the 800 F5.6 are both made obsolete by this new powerhouse lens. Let's have a look. The lens is just about the same length as the previous 600s, but it's much lighter at only 115 ounces or 7.2 pounds. That's 3,260 grams. The actual length is 17.3 inches without the hood attached. The front element is 6.5 inches in diameter. Minimum focus distance is just over 14 feet or about 4.3 meters. Focus can be limited to 10 meters to infinity or you can use the full range. The AF motor system is Nikon's new Silky Swift VCM, or voice coil motor, which uses magnets to move the focus rather than mechanical gears. This is one of the biggest features of this lens. Focusing is so fast it often feels instantaneous and it's dead silent. The focus system also seems to be much more accurate and it seems to do less hunting than the mechanical systems. The other huge feature is, of course, the built-in teleconverter. Like its sister, the 400mm f2.8, it has an internal 1.4x TC that's easily engaged and disengaged via a lever control on the right side of the lens. It's positioned very well so that it can be operated instinctively without having to take your eye out of the viewfinder or your finger off the shutter release. And just like the 400 2.8, each TC is individually calibrated to each lens, literally becoming part of the internal element groups when used. Of course, you still lose one stop of light. That's the law of physics, and that can't be repealed. <laughs> but I don't see any sacrifice in quality at all using the TC. That means that the 600 F4 becomes an 840mm F5.6 with the flick of your finger and quite possibly the sharpest 840 millimeter ever. I'm not able to detect any kind of degradation in the autofocus system while using the TC. The only possibility might be if you were already really flirting with a low light situation. And with the TC or without the TC, the focus is lightning fast. Also noteworthy is the TC does not change your minimum focus distance. So if your subject is small, but fairly close, that really does help. I've had the Z 600 millimeter for almost a month now, not too long, but I've used it almost exclusively since getting it and I've put it through a variety of real world shoots. Starting in the backyard, like most of us do with any new lens that we're eager to use, I was amazed how hand holdable it is. I'm not gonna try and convince you that you can keep it trained on a perched bird waiting for that takeoff shot <laughs> by hand holding. But for even sustained bursts, it is very doable. The balance between the 600 and the Z9 is very good. And the engineers at Nikon clearly made that a design goal, and I think they hit the mark. That good balance is also what I think helps make it feel so much lighter in the hand. So next, I headed off to Conowingo Dam on the Susquehanna River. Many of you are familiar with this location, even if you've never been there. The bald eagle is perhaps my favorite subject to shoot, and that's the best place to do it in this part of the United States. Having the ability to acquire your target at 600 millimeters and then jump to 840 millimeters for that tighter shot without losing your tracking is an amazing feature. The lens renders super crisp images with excellent colors. I'm not seeing any noticeable chromatic aberration. 
Lens flare is not an issue at all, even with the shorter hood versus the older 600mm lenses. Now this is subjective, I understand, but I swear I'm getting a much higher hit rate for keepers with this 600 than I was previously, at both focal lengths. Fit and finish are just what you'd expect from Nikon's top-of-the-line glass. It's built for pros and made to be used. The controls and functions on the 600mm are identical to those of the 400mm, which I did a video review of not long ago. Like most all the Z lenses, it has a control ring that can be set to perform any one of a number of functions. It has the focus memory set button to retain the exact focus distance desired, and then that can be recaptured using either the function ring or, like on the 400, one of the four function buttons on the front end of the lens. Those buttons can also be configured to your liking or programmed to do different things, but they all act as one. You can't set each button separately. There's basically four of them, so that one will always be in easy reach, no matter what your hand position. So by now, you've seen several reviews on this Z600 lens, so you probably know all the technical stuff. I've hit the highlights here, but I won't dive any deeper into the specs. You can find those pretty easy. What I'm most interested in passing along is my first impressions after a few weeks of pretty heavy use. From eagles at Conowingo to seals on the Atlantic to the simplicity of water birds, this lens has amazed me. Even much more challenging targets like the belted kingfisher are in better reach with this lens. I've been using it about 50-50 between handheld and monopod with a gimbal head. If I plan to shoot video with it, I usually put it on a tripod with a fluid head. But just hanging this lens and the Z9 from a good sling is not only a possibility, I've been doing it and plan to do it a lot. I don't feel that my mobility has been reduced at all from the 400 or the 800 PF that I used all last year. Just know that it's heavier and the barrel is much thicker than the 800, for example, and it does take a bit of getting used to. The sharpness of the images from this lens are, just as Nikon says in their marketing, astonishing. That's as good a word as any, and I don't think it's an exaggeration. I shoot a lot of wildlife, and nearly always shoot wide open. And the detail that I've been getting with this lens, whether in 600mm or 840mm focal length, is amazing. It seems like the closer you look, the better it gets. As noted, this is the pinnacle of Nikon lens technology, and I think possibly the most advanced production lens to date from anyone. And as such, it's not cheap. For many, it's not even affordable. Just to consider this lens is a sobering thought for anyone that's not using a business budget. But when you consider that this lens legitimately replaces two prime F-mount lenses, the 600 F4 and the 800 5.6, the price actually seems quite reasonable. That is, if you can justify it. So before I even mounted this lens to a camera body, I changed the foot to the Kirk Arca Swiss foot with the QD port, and then I put on this Roland Pro lens cover. And I added the Zemlin hard lens cap also. All things that I consider to be absolute must-haves. The foot on this lens is identical to the 400mm and the 800PF. I'll talk about those accessories separately and maybe compare the lens coat that I have on the 400mm to the Roland Pro that I have on this 600mm. Let me know in the comments if that would be of interest to you, and I will gladly do it. You'll be seeing and hearing a lot more from me about this lens in the future, and you'll be seeing a lot of content made with it. Just let me know what interests you most or what questions you might have, and I'll do my best to address them. Also, in the very near future, I will be reviewing this new Z85mm f1.2 lens. In fact, I might just film a short clip with it right now. Alright, what you're seeing right now is a quick sneak preview. 
being filmed with the 85 1.2. Thanks for watching. I'd really appreciate it if you would smush that like button and subscribe to the channel if you already don't. That really does help little channels like this.